porch? Uh, no, they came. That's uh, that happened roughly. Uh, I can't remember. This was this was heck. This was back in the end of January. That happened around uh, noon or noon or one o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came by. They came by with a search warrant at eleven o'clock at night. So. so obviously they had seen it then, and they decided. We well, they never been in the house. Right, but they didn't have to be to see the porch, did they? Well, it was like the porch was closed in. And oh, all, all the windows were boarded up. Oh, I see. Uh, like st stuff like that, like try could, to keep out of sight. Could it? Could it be? I guess, uh, Michael, when you started a big gap, an 18-inch gap like that, it would have created an intense white light. Uh, well, it was, let's see, it was, it was a 5,000 watt spark, so it was. But it would have been very intense, and uh, from, yeah, it's like a, maybe from your neighbor's perspective, Michael, they would hear this, <laughs> and their yeah, lights it was, it was would dim, and, and they'd look over at yeah, you know, they'd look over at your porch, and they'd see this white light streaming out from all the little cracks and places, and they'd get worried. Could that be? Uh, that's a possibility. Hmm. But, uh, all right, all right. Uh, so no, the main thing they were like, say it's like a, they were like a. That's the reason. I kind of want, that's one of the reasons I moved from Stanbury because uh, half that time once my head on a pole, I have the feeling. You mean they don't like you now? Uh, well, it's like a, I don't know if this is like I don't know if this is just another unfounded rumor or not, but like a, a lot of those people's television sets are ruined and stuff like that because uh, I was like drawing so much power and it's like uh, like normally it's between 110 and 120 volt outlet and well, it's like a, they were estimating. This is this what I've heard. I don't know if it's a fact or not, but they were estimating I was like bringing it down to like 80 volts, 80 and 90 volts. That is damaging to electronic gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people in town with appliances that now are door stops are probably not happy with you. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Most of the, most of them, uh, most of it is just uh, like uh, lights would flicker and like real bad and stuff like that. But uh. Evidently, it's people that were just having to be watching TV when I operated it. They operated that thing at night, too. So <laughs> yes. Uh, that way, not, not a, lot of, a, whole, a whole lot of people were like... I hadn't, see, at first, when I hooked this thing up, I thought it, it was it's a, it a 5,000-watt spark. I figured it'd be, well, that's, if, see, these transformers ain't as efficient as I was, at first thought they would be. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah well... So it was like drawing a heck of a lot more than I thought. A lot more current? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you weren't going to walk into the middle of that spark gap, were you? Uh, no. Uh, I was like, if, well, I like made the big version. If it did the same thing, I was like going to like do like throw something else for it. Like uh, not uh, something that's like... Uh, uh, something a little bigger than a screw to disappear, maybe. Yeah, like maybe an orange or something like that. And if it came out like in one piece without getting fried or crisp, then... Then you would have walked in? Well, there's other things, too. It's like the Philadelphia experiment. Uh, people were, like, uh, from what I've heard, people were... Buried in the deck? Yeah, and bed in walls and stuff like that. Yeah, because you can't tell where you're coming back out. Yeah, because you, you, uh, you lose your time lock, but... Uh, Would you have eventually done it if the orange came out okay, and then maybe you tossed a cat in or something? Uh, <laughs> a cat came out. I don't want to say that, but I figured. Oh, well, I you guess, you were going to toss it. You were going to toss a cat in. Uh, well, if everything else came out all right, like totally unscathed. Then, then the cat would have gone like, in. Like, I, well, I'd probably try something that was alive and small, like a grasshopper or something like that. That would be good. Yeah. Before the cat. Yeah. All right, Michael, hold on. We'll be right back to you. <laughs> we, uh, we're going to find out what he's experimenting with right now, and I may take a couple calls here. Michael, are you there? Yeah. Good. Michael, um, now you're a free man again, out of, out of the pokey, and ready to begin experiments I've just learned all over again. You're going to do this again, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Well, you don't give up easily, I'll say that for you. Uh, nope. By the way, what did everybody think of you when you were in jail? I assume you told them this story. Uh, As well, you... until the media started taking it seriously, everybody thought I was a nutcase. Mm-hmm. Um, you sound sane to me. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a little on the wild side, but sane. Anyway, so, what are you going to do now? 
Are you gonna re how are you going to rebuild it, in other words? Uh, right now, well, right now I'm just uh, basically saving my money and I'm going to uh, do what I originally set out to do, buy them. You're going to buy the Transformers? Uh, yep. What would be the legality of your using them if you bought them? Uh, would that be, be perfectly legal? Should be. I mean, as long as I don't, like, I don't like, might get into EPA violations by, like, take them apart and, like, get oil all over the place and stuff like that, but as long as I don't do anything like that. You mentioned you lost your job. How did your employer think you polluted his workplace with PCPs? I mean... You, you had not taken these apart, right? Well, one of them I couldn't use, and uh, I didn't really want to, like, take it back there and, like, get caught taking it back. So I uh, figured I might as well strip the copper out of it and sell the copper. So you took it apart? Uh, yeah. And while I was originally, I didn't really just dump it on the porch. That was, that was kind of like an accident. But uh, I was, like, taking the oil and uh, putting it in a plastic wastebasket. Well, it's like a, this was like a, a three thousand, only a three thousand watt transformer. That's pretty small for a pole, like uh, yeah. utility pole. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it weighs like 150 pounds, and uh, I was like the only one doing it. And my finger slipped, and I ended up dropping it, and dumping like 10 gallons of oil all over the back porch. Oops. Yeah. And any anyway. Uh, uh, ended up getting it all over me too because it splattered. And uh, evidently, the, the and anyhow, it's like a uh, got all the back porch. Well, anyhow, the shoes that I, uh, that I was wearing at the time also the shoes that I wear to work. Work, and he thought I tracked PCBs into it, into where where he used to work. He thought I tracked them into his plant, tracked PCBs in his plant. I see. Uh, so that was the end of your job. Uh, well, I, he didn't really say that, but uh, I have that feeling. Because uh, he, like, asked me uh, who and all was in my house, who and all was, was around those Transformers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Has the EPA knocked on your door yet, Michael? Uh, no. It, it, turns, it turns out uh, that was just, it turns out the Transformer I took apart, uh, I tried telling them that, but they wouldn't take my word for it. The Transformer I uh, took apart is, like, too old. It was even, it was darn old. It, it was, like, too old. For, it was, like, four PCPs were around. It turned out just to be plain old crude oil. Oh, I'm sure you were personally relieved a little about that. Well, it's like I almost—I was almost certain that that was all it was because uh, the tra uh, well, I'll put it this way: the last time that the transformer was even checked was 1924. So I see. Well, um, so you're going to try this again. You're going to save up money, buy the stuff, and try it again. Are you going to do it on the big scale the way you did last time? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It'll just. Uh, right now, I'm going to be on your back porch? Uh, well, uh, I'm living in an apartment right now, and oh. uh, yeah, I'm on the third floor, too, so I'll probably move before I do that. Like That that might be good. Yeah. That might be good. That might not go well in an apartment. Yeah, plus the power that's going, it's, uh, going to my apartment is, is only 10,000 watts, so if I draw more than that, I'll overload the transformer and blow it. Just a theoretical question for you. Um, let's say that you produced a time machine, Michael, and you actually managed to go either forward or reverse in time. Um, what would you use it for? Uh, the time machine? Uh-huh. Uh, heck, there's possibilities. They're endless. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are. Um, I, I guess I'm asking, Michael, would you use it to make money? Uh... That'd be one of the things I'd do. It wouldn't be the only thing I'd do. I mean, give you like give an example. Uh, uh, like uh, right now, there's like an AIDS plague, kind of like a 20th century Black Death. But that's right. Yeah. You know, so I, uh, I don't know exactly when they're going to have like a vaccine for AIDS or anything like that. But but you might try to bring one back. Uh, yeah. That's that's a good answer. Yeah. Um, Michael, um, let Same me... Same thing with cancer and stuff like that. Well, it's true. It, it is true. Um, let me bring a caller on and see... W you know, every line is lit up here, and I'm curious what the audience has to say about this. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Yes, hi, this is Maureen from Redding, California. Yes. Hi. Um, unless I'm misunderstanding uh, your guest there and yourself... Um, 
I am just really blown away by exactly what you have been talking about because I've always been real impressed with you, Art, as far as um, I, I've always thought you as to be a person of high intelligence, what have you, um, your guest you've had on your show in the past. I've always been impressed with that. But this has got to be the lamest thing I've ever heard in my life. You don't believe it? Well, it's basically... Um, Let's let's teach somebody how to make an atomic bomb, what have you. Uh, what do you I think mean, about that, Michael? How do you feel about that? Would you build an atomic bomb if you could? Uh, build an atomic bomb? Uh, no, I don't. No, see, he wouldn't go for an atomic bomb, ma'am. Uh, he's, no, he's talking uh, about time travel. Now, what's so right. bad about that? Well, I it, just, I mean, do you think it's dangerous or what? No, well, um, I think it's... I think it's just very dangerous as far as um, I'm sure some of the listeners that you that you have. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe this will help. Maybe this will help, ma'am. Listen, everybody. Do not try this oh, oh, at yeah. home. Well, see, basically you're going step by step by step. You That's know, right. Him. We absolutely are. That's right. Why are you doing that? Well, why do you think? Are you worried that somebody's going to do this at home and fry themselves? Of course, of course. There's idiots out there in the world. Well, you know? yeah, but, but ma'am, there are people. Uh, I could interview somebody who walked off a cliff. Uh -huh. Do you think that that would mean that my listeners would walk off a cliff? I really doubt you would have a guest on there who would try to walk off a cliff. I, I have always looked at you. But I, but what I'm saying is... My opinion of you has always been a person... I, I really admire you, Art Bell. Now you're disappointed. And I enjoy your show, and you're a very intelligent human being. I am totally blown away that you would have somebody such as the guest you have on tonight. Why? And I'm sorry if I'm... Well, the question is why? Because of... The, All this... The, the subject that you are discussing... Um, you know, yes. basically there are adults out there in this world who have a childlike mind who will be um, ignorant enough to try this kind of thing at home. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold you over a little bit. This is too much fun. Uh, now, um, tell him, Michael, say, don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. Thank you, Michael. Stand by. We're going to do a little news, and we'll be right back. Michael Markham. Affectionately, we'll call him Madman Markham. And he's in Missouri. I think he's in Missouri. And, uh, Michael, uh, I read the story um, uh, last week, and I'm not going to go through it again, but it's entitled, Kansas City Man Tries to Build Time Machine on Porch. Now, uh, long story uh, short, he built a small... Um, <sighs> Well, it wasn't supposed to be a time machine to begin with. It was just